Welcome to our course on Hammond organ. This course is designed for students who are new to the Hammond organ and those with some experience who are interested in learning more about how this unique instrument fits into jazz and into jazz blues in particular. We'll explore the controls and features of the Hammond organ. We'll look at bass lines, comping, improvisation, and turnarounds in the 12-bar blues form. And in the last lesson of the course, we'll apply all these concepts to create a full performance over the 12-bar blues in F. So the first thing you need to know about Hammond organ is how to turn it on. And even that is a bit trickier than most modern electric instruments. You turn the organ on with these two switches in the upper right, the start switch and the run switch. The start switch spins an induction motor that turns the tone generator up to speed inside the organ. The tone generator is a mechanism of shafts and gears that provides the pitches of all the notes on the organ. Once the generator is up to speed and you can no longer hear the speed changing, you can turn on the run switch and release the start switch. The run switch turns on the run motor, which is the synchronous motor that provides the precise pitch reference for the instrument by spinning everything at exactly the right speed, synchronized to the AC mains power. It also turns on all the electronics in the organ, the preamp and the power source to the external Leslie speaker. Once the organ is on, you're ready to select what sound you want it to make. And you do that with the preset keys and the draw bars. The preset keys are these reverse color keys on the left end of each manual. The lowest one is cancel, and it turns off all the sound. So no matter what's going on, if you press this lowest preset key, it cancels all the sound from that manual. Just above that, there are several keys that stay down when you press them. And these select different preset sounds that are hardwired in the back of the organ. You can change the wiring, but they're wired to a set of defaults at the factory that the Hammond Organ Company thought would be useful. And they are all useful if you want to play funerals. But if you're playing jazz, like me, you will mostly use the A sharp and the B natural presets. These select the draw bars and give you real time control using the draw bars of the tone of the organ. So right now I've chosen the B natural preset and no draw bars are pulled out in the set corresponding to the B natural preset on the upper manual. So the organ makes no sound on the upper manual. But with this B natural selected, as I start to pull out draw bars, you'll hear sound from the organ. You can hear as you move the draw bars, the tone changes. This is one of the great things about this instrument. So, on this set of draw bars, I'm going to select what a lot of people call the Groove Holmes sound, which is the lowest, lowest three draw bars pulled all the way out and the uppermost draw bar pulled out to maybe five or six. Where you'll want to set that depends on the organ. The, the volume of each draw bar is a little bit different across different organs. So here's what this setting sounds like. Now I'll set up draw bars on the lower manual. As a jazz organist, whether you're playing in a group or playing solo, one of your biggest roles is to play bass. You'll do that using mostly the lower manual and also with a big contribution from the pedals. We'll touch on the pedals later, but right now I'm gonna set up the lower manual with a sort of standard bass setting, which is the first and third draw bars pulled all the way out and the draw bar between them pulled out to somewhere between three and five is my taste. Many people play with that draw bar pushed all the way in. And the choice of that middle draw bar is, is up to your taste. You'll learn to hear the difference that it makes when you experiment. So let's hear a little bit of what this setting sounds like on the lower manual.
You may have noticed that's a pretty dry sound. And one thing we can do to help uh, make that sound more interesting is use the chorus vibrato. Chorus vibrato is controlled with, this, with the two switches and this knob near the upper left. And I'll turn on chorus vibrato for the lower manual. And I'll play something similar to what I just did with the chorus vibrato turned on. So you can hear, even if I play just a single note, the difference with and without. Here it is with C3 chorus, C3 selected here, and without. And with a full chord. So you probably noticed, especially when I played that chord, that switching on the chorus not only gives that wavering tone to the notes, but also increases the bass and treble part of the frequencies. So you'll have enhanced bass and enhanced highs on the organ when you enable the chorus. And a lot of people use it as much for that as they do for the chorus itself. The chorus tone is made of mixing the vibrato sound from the vibrato line circuit inside the organ with the dry organ sound, the unmodified sound. If you want the pure vibrato sound with none of the unmodified sound mixed in, you can use the V1, V2, and V3 settings. So here's the V3 setting on the upper manual with this Groove Holmes drawbar registration. <laughs> Kind of very wavery and especially if I take the top drawbar out. Here's V2, a bit less wavery, and V1. Those pure vibrato settings are not that common in jazz. They're a bit of a special effect. In our performances for these lessons, we'll concentrate mainly on the C3 setting and on the dry setting. So we'll either have chorus turned on or off, and if it's on, it'll be C3. Another important element of controlling the Hammond during performance is something that is very specific to the upper manual and the B natural preset selection, and that is the percussion circuit. So you heard earlier the Groove Holmes sound. And now, obviously, that high drawbar is an important part of the sound. If I turn on percussion, I get what many people call the standard Jimmy Smith registration. Very different sound. I can switch between the two with just the flip of the percussion switch. What's going on here? Well, the percussion circuit in the organ is triggered with the same key contact that corresponds to this high drawbar. So when the percussion is turned on, which only takes effect on this B natural preset on the upper manual, the signal from that key contact is stolen to actuate the percussion circuit. And in fact, you can hear the percussion by itself if you push in all the other draw bars. And the other switches on the percussion circuit are also really useful particularly if you want to do just what I was doing, which is play a percussion sound alone as a, as a special effect. The switch on the rightmost end chooses between the second and third harmonic, and those are actually a fifth apart. So here, with the second harmonic selected, you'll hear the pitch of the note that I'm playing. If I select the third harmonic, the pitch you hear is a fifth away. So most of the time if you're playing with only percussion, you'll select second harmonic. 
You can see I've also chosen normal volume and slow decay so that those percussion notes are more prominent and last longer. So you can actually play tunes with the percussion. One of the important things to know about the percussion circuit is that it re-triggers only when all the notes are up. So if I play a note and hold it down, none of the other notes that I play while that note is held down will trigger the percussion. And so you have to be able to play detached to get the percussion sound to trigger with each note. And this is an important part of organ technique. Even when you're playing, say, the standard Jimmy Smith sound, you want the percussion to trigger typically with every note. If you play legato, it won't trigger with every note. So those notes sounded, most of those notes sounded just the same as if I had the percussion turned off and played the same registration. So to get the benefit of the percussion, if you want that sound, you have to play detached. So far I've used only one set of draw bars for each manual. An important part of performance technique on the Hammond is switching between different sets of draw bars to get different sounds during your performance. So you don't have to completely readjust the draw bars, you can just set up a sound on the set of draw bars that aren't active currently. Now I've set something up on the, uh, on the A sharp preset on the upper manual draw bars, and I can just be playing along and easily switch between the two sets of draw bars. There's one more set of draw bars that we haven't really touched on, and that is this tiny set of two draw bars right in the middle. These are for the pedals, and without going into much detail here, because we'll touch on more in the lesson on bass lines to come, I'm just going to pull this draw bar out to six or seven so that I can add what we call a pedal thump to the beginning of each note that I'm playing in the bass. This is the thump by itself. It almost has no pitch. Added to the beginning of each bass note, it really helps enhance the rhythmic feel of the bass line. The last control that I want to touch on before we have a quick look at the bass pedals is this Leslie speed switch. This adjusts the speed of the spinning baffles in the Leslie speaker. The Leslie that we have for this session has stop and fast set up. Some other Leslies you might encounter will do stop, slow, and fast. But slow isn't used that often in jazz. Most jazz players prefer stop and fast and will use slow only rarely. You'll see the Leslie speed switch in different places on different organs because it isn't completely standardized. This half moon switch on the front rail is the most common. You'll also encounter switches in the cheek blocks on the left side and occasionally a sidekick switch on the expression pedal underneath the organ where your right foot lives. But no matter where it's located, that switch changes the speed of the Leslie baffles. You can hear a really pronounced difference in the sound, which I'll demonstrate now. We'll start with the Leslie stopped. <laughs> Now fast. 
podcast. So that gives you an idea of the difference that the Leslie speed can make in the sound. And that too is an important part of Hammond organ performance. Now let's have a look at the bass pedals. So now we've switched the video shot to the bass pedals. And of course the expression pedal is included in the shot as well. Let's just go through specifically what you're seeing. Right in the what looks like the foreground of the shot is this footrest rail. This isn't present on every Hammond console. The B3 has it. A100 pedals don't have it. So you might or might not find it on the organ that you're playing, but it's very prominent in this shot, and resting your foot on it is what that's for for those times when you're not playing pedals. Most of the time in jazz you will be playing pedals, so your use of that will be pretty limited. Then, just beyond that, of course, is this array of pedals that are black and white notes just like a piano keyboard, but you play them with your foot, of course. And kind of the most common technique for playing them is what what organists call heel and toe technique. So if you're walking a bass line on the pedals, you'll use both your heel and your toe. So that gives you a little bit of a view of the kind of heel and toe technique for playing both the black and white keys on the pedals. But most of the time when you're playing a jazz bass line, as we'll see in our bass lines lesson coming up next, is you'll be playing just thumps without playing the melody on the pedals. You'll be just tapping one or two pedals. Some people tap two like this at the same time. But the point is to get this low sounding, almost pitchless thump at the beginning of each note with the bass line. So together with bass played on the lower manual, it sounds like this. And different people choose different ways of, of doing it as well with regard to whether they move their entire leg and kind of stomp like this, or just a flick of the ankle. I've gone back and forth. I don't know which is better. Lately, I tend to play more with my ankle like this. On the right-hand side of the shot, still further back, you can see my right foot is on the expression pedal. This is like a gas pedal. If you want more sound from the organ, you push it more to the floor and you pull back to make the organ quieter. So pretty obvious, but expression pedal control is an important part of technique. And it's one of the big differences between the best players and the people who are maybe not among the best. Um, expression pedal control with finesse is very difficult and worth investing time and practice. Another important thing to know about the expression pedal is why it's called an expression pedal and not a volume pedal. The expression pedal not only increases the volume of the organ as you press it forward, it changes the high frequencies more than the low frequencies. So this is nice because it means when you're, when you're playing behind another player and you don't want to overpower them in the middle and upper part of the spectrum where they're improvising, you can still play bass and be heard on bass because the expression pedal doesn't bury your bass sound as much as it pulls back the middle and treble parts of the spectrum. It's a little bit hard to hear that in a demonstration, but I'll just demo how with a big full sound you can expand and contract the sound of the organ with 
the expression pedal, and you will be able to hear how the highs are affected more than the lows. I'll just play a big full chord, including pedals. That's with the expression pedal all the way to the floor. And now as I pull it back, you can hear that the shrill treble part of the tone kind of pulls into the background a little bit more than the low frequencies. Again, a little tough to demonstrate outside of a combo setting with solo organ is not so obvious, but that's a very important thing to understand about the expression pedal. I hope you've enjoyed learning about the anatomy of the Hammond organ. My guess is most people watching this lesson might not have easy access to a Hammond console organ like this one, but there's a really good chance you have access to a digital imitation of one kind or another, and many of the digital Hammond clones have gotten really convincing sonically. I hope you get a chance to play the real thing, but even if you don't, it's useful to understand the instrument your clone is trying to imitate, both from the sonic perspective and also from the point of view of how you operate its controls during performance. Our next lesson will explore the theory and construction of walking bass lines.